Yesterday morning, yesterday morning it was announced that the voice of the GAA, Michal Merhertig, is retiring at the age of 80. He looks about 12, but he's 80. And he's been commentating on GAA matches since the year of our Lord, 1949. And this Sunday, we'll see him hang up his microphone for good after commentating on the Down Cork All-Ireland final. So we couldn't and indeed wouldn't let this opportunity pass without marking it in some way. Would you please welcome one of life's great gentlemen, Mr. Michal Omerhertig. <laughs> You're some man, aren't you? Causing a stir like that this week. No comment. No comment. <laughs> what, has it, what have the last 24 hours been like for you, Michal? Well, excellent in one sense yes. and very humbling in another sense. You know, it's great to meet former players and former administrators and followers of the game. And, you know, a lot of them congratulating me, maybe for deciding to pack it in or not, I don't know. But it was great, hundreds and hundreds of them. Yeah. from all over the country. Even I had a call tonight from somebody speaking on behalf of the footballers and everything from Boston. Really? A man that's over from New York, uh, you know, for the All-Ireland. He rang me this evening as well. He rang me before he left New York. There's a lot of goodwill, I think, towards sport, mm. and especially the sport as it's shown and broadcast on radio for years and years. Yes, by but, but I won't allow you to be that humble because you are what we would call a national treasure and there's a lot of people who are very grateful to you for what you've done for people down through the years. And well, I think that's why I we're had, here this evening. I had terrific to fun you. doing that. Did you? And uh, fantastic enjoyment over the years, different generations. Yes. Met a few of them that are here tonight before we came down, so it's, it's great to meet them at any time. Why did you decide to do it and why now? Uh, I heard a while ago that uh, Dan Shanahan of Waterford had retired. <laughs> <laughs> that put the, something into my head. But uh, the reason was I've been enjoying every single game I ever did since 1949. Yes. And I began to say to myself, supposing the day came that I'd no longer enjoy it, that I'd look upon it as going out to do a day's work. Mm. And I said I'd hate to experience that. I think that's what swayed me more than anything to decide that I've been doing it long enough, and while it's still most enjoyable to leave the sea. When did you tell the family? Uh, well, if they were able to read between the lines, they'd have known it for a little while, but not until very late, really. So the next question has to be then, were they able to read between the lines? I don't think so. You know, my, <laughs> my lines are now always clear. <laughs> and how did they react? Well, mixed. Some thought it was a good idea, others didn't. You know, you'll always have a mixture of opinion, and that's what makes life interesting, that no two think alike. Yeah, well, that's for sure. And your family are with us tonight, and we... Uh, most. Uh, there's most just of one missing. Right, I'm they, one missing. They know on Sigar Moin, the knee of Sigar Moin, she okay. couldn't make couldn't it. Couldn't make it tonight. Well, we wish her well tonight, anyway. Exactly. But the rest of them are here, all 48 yes, indeed, of them. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll, talk to, we'll talk to Aideen this... Well, what, what, did you read between the lines, Aidy? Did you know what he was up to, your dad? Uh, yes and no, but I think it's, it's more of a career change or a midlife crisis of some kind, <laughs> I think. you know, it's, uh, He's never been idle in his life and he's not going to start being idle now. I mean, he's yeah. always out doing something and even beat all of us up to the top of Brandon just a few weeks ago on his birthday. So he, he'll be doing something the whole time. He's a force of nature, yeah. though, essentially. Were you sad as a family to hear that, that your dad had decided to... To, to throw in the towel on this one? Um, it's, it's a s strange one, I suppose, in a way, because we've always heard him commentating since I, I don't remember not thinking it was the, the norm. So yeah. it'd be strange in a way, but we'll still all be going to matches and all together. You know, that won't change. So. Yeah, but, it, it, but you were probably happy and uh, heartened by the reaction of the people yeah. of the country all, yeah. all, all throughout the last couple of days. Uh, amazing yesterday on the radio all day. And all day yeah. long. Uh, Christy Cooney is president of the GA. Thank you, Aideen, uh, and welcome, uh, Christy. Um, what does Michal mean to your organisation? I suppose to, to as me as a person, I suppose he means since 1949, and I wasn't even born or taught then, that Michal has been the voice of our association. Uh, he, he served our association with passion, even though not being paid by our association. Yes. Created an, an atmosphere around our games that was absolutely unique. 
set scenes that we could all wonder, wonder about on the day of major games when we were listening to radio, but in a special way brought a special passion to our association and a special passion to our games and always treated our players with the utmost respect during his commentaries. And that says something special about the man. No question. Mick O'Dwyer, of course, you're, yourself and Michal must go back a bit, do you? Yes, we go back a long, long, long time. I can assure you, go back about 50 years. And then when I got involved managing and training the team in Kerry, Michal took over the, the Kerry-based players here in Dublin. And he got those guys into pretty good shape, I can assure you. Yes. Uh, he'd be on the phone every now and again and wondering what did I do last night and he used to often say to me maybe you're, maybe you're a little bit too hard on them and I said what are you doing he says I'm resting him at the moment I want to have him fresh for the next game <laughs> that was his reply generally but I'll tell you one thing for a man that wasn't involved in managing or coaching he had some wonderful players in Dublin as you know he had Jack O'Shea, George Powell, Charlie Nelligan John O'Keefe John O'Keefe Pat McCarthy, Pat McCarthy Mick Spillane and, and, and the Walsh brothers, of course, as well. Me Jackie all. and Barry, yeah. yeah. But he had them all there, and he had them all in good shape, I can assure Charlie, Nelligan and Paddy O'Mahony. Yeah. Correct, you had them all. <laughs> as you can hear, Michal loses his memory but, but, quietly. But, <laughs> <laughs> but Michal, I had only about half the team in Kerry at that stage, as you know. Yeah. You, had, you had the rest. Well, I had the best, the better. <laughs> yeah. uh, Baz Keating, you know, one of the things that I've noticed from talking to Michal and, and interviewing people about Michal, is the sort of uh, the, the interest he takes in players and teams at a personal level. That's a, that's a unique thing, I would imagine. Well, it was one of the great things, and one of the areas that I would like to focus on tonight, sure, uh, Ryan, and uh, to say on behalf of all managers and all players, and express that great gratitude to me, Hall, because in my time as manage in management, there are always situations for a manager where he'll have you know little situations with players where they're you know. Yep. Little problems maybe that, that you know might affect and Mia Hall was the man that always had that compassion about him. And as I said, what he has done for charity, like the money he has raised for all different charities, and I, I've been the recipient of that so for so many times. Sure. So like what this country owed to Mia Hall Omar Arctic is unbelievable. And we can never, never be grateful enough to the man. For sure. And as I said many times, he must have been a genius in the jail to survive to survive all these years yeah. and nobody knows it better than myself <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that as gospel <laughs> I, i'd love to know dan dan shannon i'd love to know what is it like to listen back after a match that you've played to Michal's commentary uh, of one of your own goals i mean yeah. that must be magic is it took the words out me right ryan do you want to sit um so it was a pleasure to hear me hall maybe just a Sunday evening or Monday to listen to the commentary of the match. I was lucky enough to get a, a handful of goals there like, and to hear me hall's commentary it was absolutely outstanding. But for me it was before any match in Tolerance or Crow Park, he had the courtesy to come along and shake your hand. That tells me the man that the man is up there. Like he's outstanding. Outstanding for the G and outstanding commentator. But genuine out and you can't words can't say he'd be big last year G and I'd like to wish him best of luck. Yeah, yeah. Did, it must well, be nice can, to hear yeah. that from the various uh, the different generations, Michal. Yeah. Right? Did you see the height of him when he stands up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we get another stand up? <laughs> <laughs> stand up, Dan. Stand up, come on. Oh, Michal no, no, says stand no, up, you stand up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I, I christened him Dan the Man. Dan the Man. When a goal was needed, Dan produced. <laughs> <laughs> you know better, man. And Lark yeah. Corbett, you, you, you were one of the last players that uh, Michal will have commented on performance on, if you know what I mean. Um, so you're kind of in the history books in your own way now, connected always with Michal and yourself. Well, I suppose um, upstairs talking to Michal before he came down, he, he said it was one of the best games that he'd ever seen. Um, the all Ireland there a few weeks ago. And I think that's something special that down through the years, so many different games that he's after going through. And I just really took that on board. I thought that was, uh, I suppose, being asked to come up here then tonight, um, I think, it's something, I think it's something special. I suppose there's not too many sports in, in, in the world where you turn down the television and you turn up the radio to hear what Michal is, has to say. And I think that's what, that's, that's what he brought to the game. I think there's something special. I'd just like to wish him the best luck in his retirement and I hope that everything goes well. And yeah, I, uh, Michal. I have to say that Lar helped to make it the greatest toddling game I ever saw. Lar scored three goals in an All Ireland final. Not many people can say that. that. Yeah. Bernie. 
Uh, Bernard Brogan, I, I was saying during the week that, you know, for a lot of people in this country on Sunday, it could be a bottle of TK lemonade, a packet of potato crisps and Michal Amar Hertig. Like, they're, <laughs> they're all part of the same trilogy. And, uh, of course, you would have listened to Michal down through the years, always peppering his commentary with possibly the most bizarre comments on people's backgrounds, uh, from people listening from Timbuktu with their little uh, shortwave radio, uh, but also a bit of humour. Yeah, you brought great humour and, and great charisma to, 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 the, to the game. And um, Something that I remember was when I was away, um, away, miles away from home, and um, heading down to the local pub. You're, uh, you're a thousand miles from home, but you go into the local pub and you hear Michal on the, on the, on, on the, on the radio and you, you listen to him and everyone is clued in and having the crack and stuff. And everyone, for, that, for those uh, an hour and a half, they, they feel as if they're back home. And I think that would be the biggest loss, the, 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 the millions of people that aren't in Ireland. And, um, he always brought them home for, for, that, for the Sunday evening and a half tree. He brought them home and I think he's a huge credit to himself and he'd be a big loss to the game. Huge loss. And Colin Gowen, you're the Director General of RT and of course uh, as a colleague and a friend of ours around the corridor and somebody who always looks at me as if to say you're an Egypt but you're okay. Um, <laughs> do you, I'll miss him, will you? Will you? It's an will outstanding we? example of his editorial skill. <laughs> um, um, uh, Say again, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all miss him, won't we? Oh, of course we'll. By the way, he's not finally gone. It's important to say that. Go on. Uh, he'll be commentating on the uh, international games in uh, November. That's important. That's another occasion that we should look forward to. Sure. And, of course, I uh, hope Michal will be with us on many of the big occasions that mark our association with the, the GAA into the future. Yeah, and what's, what is it that do you think that uh, Michal's legacy will be on an organisation like this? Well, he's a public servant to his fingertips, and this is about a public service. Uh, uh, the way that Gaelic games have grown over the years is, is a, a, about the story of RT growing as well and reaching into not just homes in Ireland but across the world. And Michal is a, if you like, he's, uh, he encapsulates that sense of connection with, uh, the, uh, with the Irish public at home and abroad. So he is part of a fundamental part of the story of public broadcasting in Ireland. And Michal, where, where do you find the nuggets of information about somebody's dad being a fourth generation butcher um, and uh, the rest of it? I mean, where, where do you get those little snippets that you well, pepper I would say to? mostly by listening to people. Yeah. And if you're talking to people, they're discussing different things. Bernard Brogan there, he's very much in line to be footballer of the year, but yeah. there's one very important match to go to yet that might oust him. Now, his father was also Bernard and scored the capital goal against Kerry in 1977. Mick O'Dwyer will remember that goal, the, the second goal. Now, his father then married, is she from Lixnar? Listol. Finug, Listol, Listol. yes. So, he's half Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> so, in a year that Kerry won nothing, they'll be able to say, at least, if he is the footballer of the year, we own half the footballers. <laughs> <laughs> but from meeting people, yeah. you know, and I knew Bernard Brogan yes. as a fantastic footballer, a great all-round sportsman and all that. And yeah. I think if you're interested in something, you'll always be learning. Every time I meet Mick O'Dwyer or Babs or Dan or anyone, you'll always learn something. And I know Christy for a long time as well. I think I was the first to forecast that he was material to be a president of the GAA. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, Cahill touched on it there, you know, that uh, public service broadcasting. I think the fantastic teamwork between what was one time 2RN, what became RT Radio Erin, what is now RTE, and the GA, it has been a wonderful combination. And great for sport, great for both organisations, and above all, the people that live abroad. Was the link. Will you be in a position to come out of the sporting closet now and stop having to sit in the fence and actually wear a jersey for uh, certain days? You'd never know? know. You'd never know. <laughs> Has the time come that you might just pronounce your allegiance to someone? To someone, well... Um, to team. Kiri. Is that it? <laughs> I was born in Kiri. Ah, you had to do it eventually, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, yeah, well done. Okay. Yeah, but uh, while you're broadcasting, you're neutral. Yeah, of course. And you, you have to be, and I think all broadcasters are. Should yeah. be. Yeah. Um, now, you've, you've talked about re retirement. I, I even stumble on the word because I just don't see you ever really embracing yeah. yeah. retirement, ever. Uh, but you have, you have spoken about it, uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I just want to remind everyone at home and in the audience this evening of what it is you do best. Have a look at this. John O'Brien of Tipperary gets it down to David Fitzgerald. Breaks inside, lock on the lock on the hand. Back of the net, get a goal for the Tipperary. 
there's a, a streak around the ground now he must be a Kilkenny man because he's quite happy with the situation right now high in the air not a confident kick by any means off the upright blitz out to Massey Massey a chance of a goal and he's got it Tomas Massey in from Dublin we have Listeners, well, not here in Ireland, but see TCD students who are studying Chinese, Mandarin in Taipei and Taiwan. Could we say in Chinese, Ni Hao Ma, that means Kundasatato in Chinese. Now, Shin Shin, Shin Shin, Guru Mahal, I know. Ah, that's lovely. <laughs> You said you've been talking a lot about dogs during the week. Is this, is this the next phase of your career? It could well be. You're, you've yeah. an interest in greyhounds. Uh, an interest in greyhounds ever. Uh, I'd say I was hardly two years of age when I remember greyhounds in the house and a very good greyhound that belonged to my uncle and people were coming from miles around just to look at him. Yes. And I've owned quite a few since then, not so much in the past few years. Okay. Well, we're going to change that. matches on Saturday. Well, I know, but we're going to change all that. Is Orla Strumble here from Borna Gone? She's, she's here. Could you bring Orla in? Ladies and gentlemen, we want to introduce you to uh, Orla, who's going to join us now, Michal, to give you a small presentation <laughs> uh, <laughs> on behalf of us. <laughs> Hello, how are you? How are you? How are you? Go. Come, come. Orla, how are you? Us a thought. Us a thought. <laughs> Why don't you both sit down and, and uh, talk to me about it. Orla, what's happening to this evening now? Well, first of all, um, we're delighted to be here. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, you? Last <laughs> week, Michal was with us at the Irish Greyhound Derby in Shelburne Park. Yes. And he was telling us that the first derby he was at was 1940, and he couldn't remember if missed one. <laughs> so when we heard his retirement yesterday, and he's wished to start his own racing kennel, our um, switchboards lit up in Limerick in the head office, and everyone said, we have to get... Michal Greyhound. <laughs> now I know your type, you'd like to study the form. This is a sample of what you're going to have. Yeah. So we're going to get you to work with our own racing team, pick your own pup, follow the progress, get the trainer sorted. And we want to give it to you as our present to you in your retirement for the first year kennel fees and the pup. Congratulations. Good to meet them. Good to meet them. How's it going? It was fun to start. So this is Barney. Barney. Barney, yeah. Ba Barney. Beautiful <laughs> job. Michal, uh, on behalf of everybody, I think it's fair to say thank you, uh, good luck, and particularly in the next phase of whatever it is you do, yeah. we wish you well. But thanks for bringing your family in tonight, their lovely family that you have there, yeah. their credit to, to you and uh, you to them, uh, but also to our friends from all across the yeah. GA yeah. spectrum. On behalf of everyone, Gur Mila Mila Mahal. Gur Mila Mahal. Gur Mila Mahal. Gur Mila Mahal. Thank you for coming in. Slav. <laughs>